got the purpose and a mission in his life. And like that I said many times in my classes, to find out who you are and what your mission, that's not the hard part. That's not the, the big test. The big test is to believe that about what that you found about yourself, what you found out, is important to Hashem. And that's great. And with that you need to work. And that's your mission. And that's your purpose. And it satisfies Hashem. And it's amazing. If you like go fishing, so for you it's going to look like some empty thing that you do. If you like jogging, Okay, so I'm running. If you like to eat, so you're going to think to yourself, now I'm just, I have tava tachila, just desires, I'm wasting my time, what am I doing? Three hours every day in the kitchen, in front of the cabin, don't know what to choose. No. But if you would hear that the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, he was at his kitchen, and for two hours he was thinking, what to take and what to eat, for sure you would say, no, the Baal Shem Tov, he had such intentions, and who knows what he was thinking, and while he was eating, he was bringing up sparks from early generations, and you don't know, the Baal Shem Tov, he had such intentions, Yehudim combinations, the letters, he was doing things. Maybe you're doing the same, and you're just not aware to yourself, like that he was, because you don't know what you do. You don't have a clue what happens when you eat. If now you see your child is eating some, some snack, a chocolate bar, he's happy. And he forgot to say shakol on it, and he doesn't remember to wash his hands. He doesn't have a clue about the halacha now. He just, him and the chocolate bar. That's the only thing that he's got now in his world. And you now, his parent, you're going to look at him, that's what you're going to see. Will you be happy, or angry, or upset? If you're crazy, you're going to be upset. But if you're normal, you're saying you'll be happy. Only because that he is happy. Only his satisfaction alone, that, only that. It will be so satisfying for you to see your child happy, enjoying, eating. Great, maybe there is a higher level than that way to eat the chocolate bar. Maybe also to purify yourself, to, to think about Hashem, to remember Hashem, to bless Hashem. Great, wonderful. In Jerusalem, in Bet HaMikdash, great, many, many higher levels than just to enjoy. But also just to enjoy, for a parent, it's a blessing. So for Hashem, for the Creator, it's the biggest blessing of them all. Just to see you happy. You jog, great. Now you, 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 you did something that was just satisfying you. And now you're relieved, and now you're happy, and now you're cool, now you're, you feel good with yourself, and, and you haven't washed your hands, and you didn't thought about Hashem. But Hashem is very happy. And, and the rabbis are crazy. The rabbis are crazy. What can we say? Many, 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 many people that claim to be spiritual guides and rabbis and teachers clearly lost their minds between the halachot, between the rules, between the commandments and all of the and, and all of the books and the chapters and, and the volumes and, 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 and the verses and and the paragraphs and the letters and the intentions and the books of the Kadmonim, the, the, the different she taught and and we lost our mind already. And that's not the will of Hashem. That's not the will of Hashem. The will of the Creator, first of all, is that we're going to be friends, that we're going to be here together, that we're going to make it all together, as one, as one person, with one heart, dedicated, with a happy heart, with a wishing soul, with a smile, with a desire to do more, and slowly, slowly, we're going to learn. I'm a Baal Shuva. In the beginning of my tshuva, I didn't know the difference between right to left. I didn't have a clue about halachot. Someone asked me, do you learn Mishnayot? I told him, what's Mishnayot? I didn't know what are we talking about. I didn't have a clue, no idea, nothing about it at all. After that, I was already walking with a kippah, with tzitzit. A person once came to me and he asked me, are you a, a reformed Jew? So I told him, no, 
Haredi, right? Haredi. Yeah, I asked him, why, why are you asking? He said, because we're not allowed to water the flowers in Shabbat. I told him, ah, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. With tzitzit, with zakan, with beard, with kippah, I didn't know. I was not lighting fire in Shabbat, lighting fire. I was, I was keeping Shabbat, and I was taking care of my garden in Shabbat. I didn't know. So how can you blame a person that le never learned? I didn't know about Nitilat Yadayim, I didn't know about the blessings, I didn't know anything. The number of mistakes that I made in those days were like so many times, like so many mistakes a day. Because I didn't know. And now you think that Hashem was upset? Where did Hashem Yidbarach woke me up from? From the darkness. From complete darkness He revealed His kindness and his love, endless love, love that for sure was not dependent in the purity of my actions because I was clubbing in those days. I was not doing no pure actions in those days. I was just doing whatever I wanted. I was driving my bike, my jeep, I was breaking Shabbat, I was eating treif, I was 19 days in Amsterdam. I was not keeping anything. Froom for sure I was not. I was baked, fried, <laughs> roasted. I was done. I was finished. <laughs> I was dead. But Hashem Yitbarach revealed His love to me, on me. And He showed me that He loved me with no con connection to my condition, to my spiritual level, to my spiritual understandings, to my, 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 my how I keep the halacha. Now, Balet Shuvah and people that are religious, they think to themselves, Oh no, I know so much, but I'm not keeping, so Hashem, for sure, He's upset, now Hashem is angry. Me, myself, in my life, I never saw the anger of Hashem. I, never, in, I mean, there are many judgments in the world, there are many dinim, there are many, many hard cases and situations and moments and times, and I went through those difficulties as well. But to tell you that I saw that it was a punishment, or as a result of something that I did, it will be only the fruit of my imagination. Really to see the connection, me, myself, in 20 years of tshuva, I haven't seen it. Never. I saw prayers being answered, that's for sure. I saw miracles happen, that's for sure. But I'm not sure if they came based on a mitzvah that I kept, on something good that I did. Or that only Hashem really revealed His kindness for free, with no reason, just out of His endless love to us. Now someone asked me a few days ago, I sat with a couple about Shalom Bayit and talking to them, and I gave them some very deep advice about Shalom Bayit, and I, it was very clear that I'm able to help them in things that it would take them 20 years of, I don't know, killing who to, to <laughs> find out the answers. And I just gave them the answers and sold very important deep things for that. I think that Hashem, He gave me a certain power, a certain power of understanding to give the right advice because that I can see in a very clear way that all of the bounty that I received from Hashem is based on His loving kindness and not on my, the purity of my actions, the greatness of my actions. And it's not that I did not put effort in Abodat Hashem. I did. I learned many pages, I was awake many nights, I tried to do a lot of crazy things that everyone are desiring to do. I was learning standing, and I was not sleeping in a bed, and I was mm -hmm. fine. I was a meshugah, a breast of a meshugah in many ways. I tried to wake up chatzot, and mikveh, and in Motzei Tisha Be'av, and in, in the freezing cold, and a crazy breast level meshuga, like a regular. And I told him, I told them that I don't think that the gifts that I received from Hashem was based on that. And for me it's very clear that it's only because that He really loves me. Because like I explained to you before, He woke me up from a place that my actions were unbearable in, by the rules of the Torah. It was like, he, an action of a person like that must reject him more from the Gdusha, but Hashem Barach works in mysterious ways, and he just took me in. So, 
I know in a very clear way that everything that I received came from the love of Hashem. So, if now I know that my prayer has been answered so many times, and if I know that you can achieve so many, so much, so many things by your Avodat Hashem, serving Hashem in Barach, and it's not because of your greatness, so it's available for every person, from my point of view, to succeed and to achieve the same and more than what that I achieved. Because if Hashem just loves you and then He gives you things, because He sees your will, because you see that you want, so I just need to wake up the will to want Hashem in the hearts of people, and then Hashem will reveal His kindness on them. And it's not depends on who they are and what their level and when they wake up in the morning and how they go to sleep and what they think. No, it's just depends on the intention of their heart. Like the verse is saying, Rahmana li babai, the Creator, He wants their heart, means the intention. He seeks for the truth. So if you're holding the truth, so He's with you. Hashem Elokechem Emet, He's a God of truth. If you're truthful, Hashem is with you. If you're lying, Dover Shkarim, Hashem cannot stand Him, cannot stand close to Him. You're lying to yourself. Okay, you rejected the purity by yourself, by your lies, that you lie to yourself, that you lie to others, that you're not loyal, that you're not who that you are. So, it's written on Gid'on. Gid'on was one of the judges of our nation, of Bnei Israel. And Hashem Barach said to Gid'on, Lech bekochacha zeh, v'oshata et Yisrael. Go with your own power and redeem Am Yisrael. Means that, how he gonna redeem them? He, they all need to have the Mary to be redeemed. You will show them, by your life experience, by your success, that they can achieve exactly what that you achieved. Avraham was different than Yitzchak, and Yitzchak was different than Avraham. And Yitzhak was different than Yaakov, and Yaakov was different than both of them. Why? Because one learned from the other how to find himself, and not to how, how to copy and, and to, to, to imitate his father or his grandfather. Just he saw, oh, my father, he really became himself. He really found the root of his own soul, and now... I'm going to do the same, and I'm different. One is a poet, one is a singer, one is a, a, a carpenter, and, and one is an accountant, and one is a lawyer, and one, he can also be a Talmud Chacham. And it's all great, because we need them all. Because we must take care of all particles of the creation. We must have someone that will care about the dolphins. We must, because they're here, and they're alive, and they're swimming, and we don't want to poison them. And we want them to be happy. And they're important in the creation. So someone needs to be in charge of that. And it cannot be a very good lawyer. He doesn't care. He cares about other things. So we need someone with a green head to go and to take care of the dolphins, or the squirrels, the porcupines, the animals, the deers. Someone needs to be there. And who's going to be there? The one that cares. One that cares about the ozone, about the weather. He will care about the weather. I cannot care about I couldn't care less about the weather. <laughs> it's never going to be my job. But there are people, I have a student that he, from the age of six, of seven, he lives in L.A., a very good friend of mine, he cares about the weather. You can never imagine how much he knows about the weather. Since he was five, six, he... Everything he knows, every cloud, he knows when it's going to rain, he knows everything. In two weeks he can tell you exactly what's going to happen in every state in America. He knows everything about the weather. He's a genius, so we'll put him in charge, the, the Emuna weather uh, manager. He's going to put him a point on that. He will be in charge of that. So Everyone got his talents, got his abilities, got his powers, got his wisdom, got the gifts that Hashem treasured inside of him, and he can ask himself, okay, what am I doing? What's the worth of, of, of thinking about the weather? But Hashem Yorach, he put that gift inside of you. He gave you that wisdom. 
He gave you that desire for that unique thing in the world. You think it's not important. Hashem made it. We just cannot understand the greatness of understanding in weather, in numbers, in nature, in dancing, in poetry, in, 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 in science. We cannot. But if, for an example, you're very good in computers, in math, that's what you know, you're a genius, and you work all day, and you're in a high-tech company, and you work, and you have faith. You see Hashem it Barach, in the screen. You see Hashem because you are you're, you're crazy. And that's what you see. You see the spirit of God inside your work. That's what you see the supervision of Hashem and you see how things work and, 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 and you can see the, 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 the mystery of of, 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 of of computers, of numbers, of codes, of 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 of, of, of that section in, in the creation. And now all of your colleagues, all of your friends in the same company, in the same job you have, they cannot see Hashem. And if they're going to heal me, it will be very hard for them to follow me. Because they, like I don't care about the weather, they don't care about me. <laughs> like, I know, another Haredi, another religious <laughs> person comes to, to, to talk to us, to convince us, to change our lives. You know, we don't want to heal them. But if you, that you're also crazy on numbers, but you're also crazy on Hashem, you're going to talk to them, you can wake up, ignite that spark of light of their sleeping soul. Because with you they can communicate. And if you're going to just say, thank God, and wow, Chasdei Hashem, kindness of Hashem, and you're just going to say, okay, I'm going to pray for that thing, they're going to look at you weird a little bit, but after a while, it will be interesting because you're also a genius and you also have faith. You're also one thing and you're also something that they can relate to. So they will listen to you. And then you're going to save their lives in a way that I don't have no access to them. I can sit for hours with them and they cannot heal me. They don't want to heal me. And there are people that will listen to you only because that when you were 16 you were drinking beer with them. And it's crazy. It is crazy. And that's the reason that they will listen to you, because you were drinking when you were young, when you were teenagers, you were drinking, now they can count on you. <laughs> they are counting on you because you were drinking together when you were 16. It's crazy, but it's reality. So we need to use the tools that God gave us to reveal His loving kindness to the world. And now you can understand how important you are. Even that you're not a Talmud Chacham, that you're not Hasidic, that you don't have a clue in Halakha, that you're so far from Torah and Mitzvot, that you don't have time to learn, that you have so many difficulties covering your head and being modest and keeping Shabbat and eating kosher. Ask Hashem, Hashem, are you happy for me? The answer is yes. Unless you're going to play into the hands of the Yetzirah, of the evil inclination. If you're going to listen to your inner voice, you will see that Hashem is keep on supporting you and building you and loving you and reveal His love and His mercy on you and gives you so many things and, and, and spoils you, spoils you and, and, and wrap you with love. With all the difficulties and even in time of difficulties and even in the hardest times, times of crisis that... You don't have a clue what advice and what you're going to do with yourself and how to get out of this situation. Also, in those moments, when you're going to look back, you're going to see that Hashem Barach, He gave you wisdom and humility in those hours that you wouldn't achieve in a million years of success. And those points are the vessels to contain the wisdom of, of Hashem, really to understand the will of Hashem. Because if you went through a holocaust in your life, if you went through a very hard time in your life, crazy divorce, Hasa Shalom, people lost family members, lost their job, had to sell their houses, were very sick, whatever, it humiliated you, it broke you to pieces. Now, you're so humble, that you can understand why people are struggling and you can dedicate from your time to other people and you can understand why people cannot focus and cannot learn and, and, and then you become Rahman, you become mercy, merciful. You care. 
because you understand the situation. And if Hashem wouldn't put you in that situation, in that difficulty, you would never understand. Oh, he's not learning, so you disqualified him. Oh, he's not learning, let's disqualify him. He doesn't have money, let's disqualify him. You can understand how you can lose all of your money and not to have no ability to learn, within if you want to learn. And Hashem can take your will to learn. And Hashem can do whatever He wants with you. So you can understand that a person can find himself lost and confused and empty, but he's a pure soul. He's got amazing intentions. And you can just jealous and, and, and be envious why you're not like Him. Because He's so amazing and He's so beautiful and He's so great. And, and I wish that I would be so humble and I wish that I would be so kind and I wish that I would be so polite and so generous and, 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 and he doesn't have no money. And you can be so rich and, and cheap and he will be so poor and so generous and will host you and bring you into his house and will bless you and will feed you and he doesn't have what to give and that maximum cream cheese and crackers, amazing. And, 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 and it's going to be so delicious. Why? Because he gave his heart. And you can appreciate that. But the main thing is not to think about him. It's to think about yourself. To judge yourself favorably. To find your own path in life to understand that who that you are, it's exactly who that Hashem wanted you to be. And your lackings are not lackings at all. It's the armor, that's your skin. That it might be an elephant skin that Hashem is protecting you with. This is your talent, this is your power, this is your, your weapon, this is your, your, your tools of art, this is how you can create, this is how you can pass the message through techn technology, through art, through music, through whatever you do, through a simple conversation in the garage with that poor guy. But with your vocabulary, with your slang, with your life experience, with your scratches, with your defects, with your defaults, you can come and communicate with people that no one else can reach. And it's only because that you're damaged and crashed into the wall so many times in your life. But that's your gift. If you would put your mind into the will of Hashem, okay, now that's my condition, I'm a wreck, that's me, I'm a wreck, 100% ruined, total lost, okay, but I can still drive, slow, <laughs> close to the sidewalk, but I can drive. So like that, you're going to drive slow, you can pay attention, to people that are walking, if you're going to drive so fast in your sport car, you cannot pay attention to people, you cannot see no one. But if you had a flat tire and you know the feeling of waiting for a couple of hours in the highway in a, in a, in a, in a crazy rain, so you will have a heart to everyone that you will see that is stuck. And you will stop your car and you will help people and you're going to communicate, you're going to be part of, of life. But if you never had it, and you always switch in brand new cars, and so you will never going to stop to help no one. It's almost impossible. So the defects and the lackings and the weaknesses that we have are the gifts that we received from Hashem. Now we must stop criticizing ourselves and thinking to ourselves that we know that we messed up and that we know that we're so horrible and that we... Because you don't know who you are. And we must admit, you don't have a clue who you are. You don't have 1% of understanding about the purpose of your life. Do you know who you are? You know, barely you can remember your name. How many times someone asks you, who are you, and you had to... Th uh, right, uh, <laughs> it's, a hard, it's a hard one you asked. I need a few minutes for that. You don't know who you are, you don't know what's your mission, what's the purpose of your life. So we can understand. Shalom Aleichem, Rabbi Akiva, welcome. You know Rabbi Akiva was a Baal Shiva. You know that Rabbi Akiva, when he was 40 years old, he did not know how to read the Aleph Bet. This is Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, he was a Baal Shiva. Only when he was 40 years old, he started learning the Aleph Bet. And he tried to go to the Bet Midrash to learn Torah with the wise people, with the Talmidei Chachamim, and he couldn't understand what they're talking about. 
He came back to his wife Rachel and he told her, I cannot learn, I cannot understand, they're talking too fast, they're talking Hebrew, I don't know what they're saying. So she told him, you need to go and learn with first grade. And that's what he did. He went to learn with kids six years old and he learned Torah with them. He was 40, they were six, and everyone were laughing at him, and kids were mocking him, and he came back home. And he said to his wife, I'm about to give up, I don't have the power, I can't stand it, everyone are laughing at me, I'm sitting on the floor, the Rebbe is, is punching us, I don't know, he's 40 years old, he was, <laughs> they wanted to knock him down. <laughs> on Rabbi Akiva, it's written that before he did tshuva, before he came back to Hashem, he hated the Talmidei Chachamim, the rabbis, so much that he said, give me a Talmid Chacham, a rabbi, and I'm going to bite him so hard that I'm going to break his bones. That was Rabbi Akiva before of his tshuva. I'm going to break his bones, like a, like a donkey bites and not like the dog bites. I'll break his bones, that's what Rabbi Akiva said. And after that he did tshuva and he was so humbled and went and learned with the first grade and he humbled himself, he built a vessel to understand people and to have patience for people and to go and to talk to everyone and to reveal the kindness of the Creator to the world. And today all of the Torah that we're holding passed in the hands of Rabbi Akiva. He was the main rabbi in his generation that passed the wisdom to the next generation. He passed it to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai that we celebrate his Yorzeit in Nagba Omer. All of those bonfires. The student of Rabbi Akiva. He received all of his wisdom from his rabbi, Rabbi Akiva. So who was that huge, gigantic Rabbi Akiva? And you want to know something about Rabbi Akiva? He also learned from a Baal Shuvah. His rabbi was Rabbi Eliezer Agadol. Who was Rabbi Eliezer Agadol? Rabbi Eliezer Agadol, the great Rabbi Eliezer, he was the son of Horkanus. In the beginning they called him Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkanus, the son of Horkanus. Horkanus was a very rich person, very wealthy, billionaire person in, that, in those days. And he had many fields, he was very rich. And his son was 27 years old, Rabbi Eliezer, before he was called Rabbi Eliezer, he was just Eliezer. And he was plowing in the fields. He didn't have the brain to be a manager and to run the business with his brothers. And he was a simple worker plowing the fields. And when he was 27 years old, he came, his father came to see him working and he saw that he sits and cries. And he asked him, why are you crying, Eliezer? He said, I want to learn Torah. Oh. So he told him, look, we've been through that already. You're not qualified to learn Torah. Maybe I'll take you to work in an easier job. Come, I'll take you from the side of the mountain to, to the flat, to the simple fields. Come, I'll take you, it's going to be okay. After two weeks he came and he saw Eliezer is crying. He asked him, why are you crying? He said, I want to learn Torah. I told him, listen, we went through that already. You're not able to learn Torah. Soon you're going to get married. You have, you're going to have children. Send them to the Cheder, to the Talmud Torah. It's going to be okay. You're not built for that. You cannot learn Torah. Rabbi Eliezer kept on crying until that Eliyahu Anavi saw his tears and came and asked him, Why are you crying? He said, Because I want to learn Torah. Eliyahu Anavi told him, You need to go to Jerusalem and to learn Torah from Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, that he was the prince of Am Israel in that generation. Go and learn Torah from him. He went. He stood in front of his doorstep, in front of his door, waiting that Rabbi Yochanan will come back from the Beit Midrash, from the Kolel. When he came back, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai asked him, What are you doing here? He said, I came to learn Torah. I want to learn Torah. He asked him, Okay, you're 27 years old. Why you haven't learned? Your father didn't taught you? He said, Nothing. I'm not able to learn. Not Kriyat Shema, not Birkat Amazon, not how to pray Shemona Yisrael. He didn't know anything. Rabban Yochanan ben Zakkai taught him how to say Birkat Amazon, how to read Kriyat Shema, all of the basics, when he was 27 years old. After a few years, he started teaching and spreading Torah. 
And while he was teaching, the student testified that the light that came out of his face was never been seen since Moshe Rabbeinu was teaching Torah when he came down from Mount Sinai. Another Baal Tshuva that only in the age of 27 years old started his baby steps. He didn't know anything about Torah. He didn't know how to say Kriyat Shema. He didn't know how to say Birkat Amazon, how to say Shmona Esre, how to say Brachot on the foot. Nothing. That was the rabbi of Rabbi Akiva. And he passed the Torah to Rabbi Akiva. And Rabbi Akiva passed it to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said, you know what is our secret? What it's all about? He said, Anan Bechavivuta Talia Milta. It all depends in the love that we have between us. That's it. That's the secret. That's the weapon. That's the secret of the Creator and His children. Only to love each other, to care, to support, to give from your time, to give from your talents. There are people that only you can speak with and I cannot talk to them. They're not going to listen to me because I'm an Israeli, because I have such a long beard, I have payas. They're not going to listen. They're not able to hear me. They cannot understand and relate to my accent. They won't count on me. Only because that they are closed. Only because that they are narrow-minded. We're not going to talk about me. That they're right that they're not counting on me. But for the sake of the explanation, even if they are not able, even if they are narrow-minded, so Hashem Barach sent you he chose you to go down to those dark places, to those cracks, to those places that no one ever, no footstep of a Jew ever stepped there before. And you can be that messenger to reveal the light of Hashem, the light of the free love, of the truth. If a person is truthful, Hashem is with him. So now, what you need to do for that? Should you be a genius? Should you finish the shas? Should you wake up before dawn to make the chalot? No. You should just say the truth. If someone calls you and asks you, do you want to come out? Do you want to go? And you don't want, you say, no, I don't want. And you're not afraid to be who that you are. And if you're tired, you can say, no, I'm tired. And if you're tired of him, you can say, no, I'm tired of you. <laughs> and you say the truth. And as long as you lie because you're afraid, because you're terrified, because you're traumatized, it's all lies. And the excuses you can tell yourself. And the reason that you suffer, and that you hate yourself, and that you blame yourself, it's only because that you are not you. That you not let your true self be uncovered, be exposed. You're not truthful and loyal to who that you are. If you wanted to dance and you stopped dancing because you married him, so you cheated on yourself. So you blocked yourself, your creativity. You blocked the gifts that Hashem gave you. And you did it by the name of God, by the name of your imagination, by the name of your fears, by the name of your anxieties, by the name of your husband, by the name of your, your rabbi. I don't care. I'm telling you, they can all go to hell. <laughs> if they destroyed your life, they can all go to hell. I don't care. Hashem Yitbarach, He wants you happy. Hashem Yitbarach, He wants you to be happy. So now if you're not able to function, if you're not able to cooperate, if you're not able to run, if you're a retired person, if you are a confused person, if you, you suffered, you, you, you went through so much hell in your life, Except of compassion and understanding and love and support, there is nothing else that that you should that you should go through that you should that you should experience. No one said that it's good to be lazy, that it's good not to function, but at least that the person that spends his life with you will appreciate you and will understand that you have emotions, that you have feelings, that you have fears, that you need someone to talk with. So many people are not communicating, and you must fight for that, to communicate, to talk, 
And if your husband or your wife, they don't have that ability, you need to help them also. If he doesn't want to hear you, you need to help him to develop that ability, to develop that sensitivity, that understanding. And for sure you're not allowed to give up. Because when you give up, you give up on yourself. You give up on the treasures that God planted, treasured inside of you. And you must fight to uncover those lights that Hashem Barach put inside of you and to express them and to fight for that. Because you can reveal the greatness of the Creator only if you will expose the gifts that He gave you. If one is a rich person, he's a millionaire, he needs to give charity. If, there, if we're not going to give money, so all of the people that depends on Him by the secret of the creation, the, how that Hashem organized things, the hierarchy of how Hashem established the world, if He will not give His Maiser, millions of people will not enjoy the food that they deserve, that they should receive through Him. And if you're a genius in computers, so the world must experience that, receive that from you. And if you're going to block yourself because you're afraid, and if you're a dancer, and if, and if you, I don't know what, you can be an amazing nanny, amazing mother, you, whatever, you, you, I don't know. The gifts that you have, the talents that you have, them you need to expose. With them you need to use. Them you need to share with the world. To let people enjoy from what that Hashem gave you. To one he gave wisdom, to one he gave power, to one he gave money, to one he gave beauty, to one he gave power of speech, to one he gave the, the ability to, to design fantastic rooms and, and living rooms. You must use that. People need that. People really need your ability, your talent, your gifts. It's not divine spirit. Where is your business card? <laughs> Everyone received a talent from Hashem Barach, and Hashem, trust me, He thought about it before. If He made you the best cook in the world, the best chef in the world, there's a purpose for that. What am I doing? I'm always cooking. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what Hashem Barach is passing under your hands. When you give food to someone, maybe that food healed him from cancer, and you don't have a clue about it, and you don't know. And maybe when you're designing living rooms, you're doing it like the wisdom of Peng Shui, the Chinese wisdom. And you don't know, you never learned Peng Shui. But Hashem Barach, He puts it in your heart to put the bookcase in one place and to put the dining room table in one. And you do it under the supervision of Hashem Barach, And you have that gift. And when you're going to do it, you're going to bring healing and happiness, and joy, and wealth to that house. And you don't know that you have that talent. Why? Because you don't believe in yourself. And you don't know what happens when you take the chairs, and when you move the, the bookcase, and when you lift those boxes, and when you throw the garbage, and when you now decided to get rid of those old ancient books that are sitting for thousands of years in your bookcase, and you just decided to throw them away. You don't know what you're doing. It's all spiritual. There is much more that is hidden than what it is revealed. For you, it's old books. <laughs> I'm going to touch your books, don't worry. We're going to change the subject. Okay. We're going to talk about Rabbi Akiva again. We must believe in ourselves. To believe in Hashem, it's to believe in ourselves. You cannot believe in Hashem until you're going to believe in yourself. You cannot. Because Hashem reveals Himself to you through your soul. Hashem is Pnimiyut. He's your inside. He's your soul. He's inside of you. To see Hashem outside, it's the hardest thing of them all. To recognize Hashem, where is Hashem? Okay, there's a wall, there is a door, there is a bookcase, there are people, so there are seats, there are the... So many furniture, so many de details, so many particles. How am I going to find Hashem? It's confusing. You need to believe in Hashem. When you see the world with your physical eyes, you cannot see Hashem. To see Hashem in Barach, it's on the inside. The clearest evidence, the easiest way to understand it, it's for one second to close your eyes. And then, instead of having so many details that you cannot count, 
you have only one thing that you see inside. Infinity. Close your eyes. What do you see? Anything, nothing, everything, something. You can't see anything. What can you see? Everything. Where is it? Endless. Infinity. You cannot see and you can see it all. When you close your eyes, you find your inside. You can connect yourself to your soul because Hashem lives inside of you. This is why we have a godly soul, Neshama Elokit, that it's part of heaven, that it's part of God, that it's the purest part of the creation. It's your connection, your channel to the Creator. It's an inner thing. And when you still deny yourself and argue with yourself and hate yourself and cannot stand yourself and, ex and, 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 and upset about yourself and, and, and hate yourself and, 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 and so you don't have the connection. You lost connection. What's the Wi-Fi password? <laughs> you need to ask your friends, what's the Wi-Fi password? And they're going to tell you that you need to express yourself, that you need to make peace with yourself, that you need to be who that you are, that you need to accept your true self and to let it shine and to let it glow and to let it bloom and to express it and to say it and to speak it and to shout it and to scream it and to sing it and to paint it and to write it to design nice living rooms for you. <laughs> to be who that you really are. Because that's who that Hashem made you to be. And as long as you're not doing that, you're blocking the light of Hashem. You're blocking the gifts that Hashem put inside of you to give out to the world by being afraid, by being selfish. Even if it's because you're afraid, even if it's because that you're still confused, even if it's because you still blame yourself on things, that you, you listen to Lashon Ara, you heard bad things that someone told about you, and you bought it, and you fell into that trap, that you're lazy, that you're useless, that you're whatever, that you're stupid, that you're ugly, that all the imaginations. And now you hate yourself. Because people were laughing at you, because people were mocking you, because people were rebuking you, because people were insulting you, because people were using you, because whatever. Those are all lies, and you bought them. So now at least drop them. Drop all of those imaginations and go with the purity of your soul. And see the purity of your heart means your will, your intention, your desire to love and to give and to care. And go with that. Go with the purity of your heart, with your holy desire to live and to give life, to make everyone happy. And go with that and shine to the world. That's the only thing we have. You are the only friend that you have. You're the only one that can support you, the only one that can love you. You're the only one that you can trust. You're the only one that needs to build yourself. You must be your best friend. You must build yourself to become the one that you know that you are, that you know that you have inside. And the low self-esteem, it's all a lie. Because you're talking about the daughter of the Creator. You're talking about a, a holy soul. You're talking about a person that you don't know. You're talking about someone that you still don't know because you haven't met yourself completely yet. You don't know who you are. One hour before that Rachel Imenu was the famous Rachel Imenu, someone knew her, someone thought about her. She was a random person, walks in the streets. No one never heard about her. Rebbe Sarah Schneider, someone heard about her. She was Sarah, she was a very nice woman. She was very nice, she didn't bother no one. Okay, great, but no one heard about her. Today, she's a name, she's a brand, she's a car, she's... she's, she's, she's uh, She's a, a lot of things, but why? Only because after the fact we're um, idolizing her. Before of that, one hour be before that she opened the first Beit Yaakov, she was a Sarah. It was a regular Sarah that was walking in the streets, in the alleys, and she had her thoughts and her weaknesses and her confusions. But one day she decided, that's it, I'm changing the world. 
and she went against the stream and she decided to, 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 to argue and to fight and to establish and to build. And you can do it. And you can also do it. Only dead fish are swimming with the stream. You want to live, you need to swim against the stream. You need to fulfill yourself. You need to achieve your dreams. To accomplish your goals. To be strong. And to be ready to fight. And not to give up. And not to let the sadness and the depression and the weaknesses overpower you. And break you to pieces. There's no reason that you're going to give up on life. No reason. And if he cannot appreciate it, so... You know what to do with the trash. <laughs> if someone doesn't know how to respect you, goodbye, see you later. It's not a problem. You must be a hero. You must be strong. Every person deserves honor. Every person deserves respect. And you say, okay, I'm going to suffer. If now you would live in heaven and I would tell you you need to go to hell, I understand why you refuse. But anyway, you suffer. Anyway, you live in hell. Anyway, every day is a nightmare. So, at least be happy. So, at least be loyal to yourself. At least you're going to have one hour a day. Some moments are happy. You're right. We must be very strong on being who that we are. You're never going to lose by being honest, by being truthful to yourself. You're just going to lose by not saying the truth by not being who that you are. You're going to give up on one dream, and then on the second, and then on the third, and then on the fourth, and you're going to get used to that. Uh, you learn from your life experience. If you gave up once, now a second time, and now you lost this, and you lost that, so nah, I'm useless, I don't have a chance, I'm already 40, I'm already 50, now I become 60, now nah, gave up. Maybe you have another 60 years to live, who knows? And even if you have only one hour, so maybe you're going to live at least one hour of your life with a smile on your face. And I'm recommending to do that with all of your heart. Not to try to go all the way with your truth. And not to back off. Because it's better to die as a warrior that fought for the truth than to live 120 years as a liar that hates himself and knows that he's a coward, and that he's cheating himself, and that he abandoned his principles and, and all of his truth, because he was scared, because he was terrified, because he cared what people are going to say, what people are going to think. They're going to scream at you, and now what? And then what? Okay, say so they're going to rebuke you, and then what? Like you haven't been rebuked before. Oh. What's going to happen? I once went to a rabbi, his name is Rav Alter David Chaimstern from Bnei Brak. And I told him about a horrible neighbor that I had. A horrible, nightmare neighbor that I had. Something like Freddy Krueger from Nightmare <laughs> Adam State. Something sick. Sick. A thief. Gazlan mi deoraita. A liar. A murderer. Horrible person. Rab Alter David Chaim Stern told me, why are you afraid of him? He is a liar. He is a gazlan midoraita. He is Rasha Mirusha. He is the Samich Mem. That's what he told me. Like, he is the devil. He said, but why are you afraid of him? What he going to do to you? He going to slap you? And then what? What else can he do to you? And the question is, what else can he do to you that he haven't done before? <laughs> Nothing can happen to you. When you connect yourself to the truth, when you decide, I'm not going to be afraid anymore, nothing can hurt you. You're ready to go. Whatever it takes, whatever will happen, whatever will be, you're ready to fight for your truth. You can be terrified from death and from every sickness and from every war and from every challenge and be terrified. And if suddenly you see your child running to the highway, you're going to run like crazy. And you can die. And you know that you can die. But you're not going to think. Why? Because you have a purpose. Your child is over there and he's in a risk. So now you dropped your fears and all of your worries and you're going to run to save life. So save your life. 
So save your life. And not only your life. Because when you're not alive, your children are not alive, and your friends are not alive, and your relationship is not alive, and your house is not alive, and nothing is alive when you're dead. So revive yourself and come back to be who that you are. And connect yourself to the source of life, to your chiyu, to your inside, to your soul, to your beating heart that you forgot about it. And start breathing again. And go and sing, and go and dance, and go and write. Write your novel, write your book. Yes, go and travel the world. Go and breathe, go and meditate. Go do things and don't be afraid to do them. Because Hashem is with you. And He's with you not because you're religious, because He was with you before you were religious. And even when you have your downs, He's with you over there, like that many verses are saying. And we don't say go down. We say don't be afraid of anything. Go fight the war of women, of men, of people, of human race. Go fight for the Creator's name to reveal His kindness, to reveal His grace, His beauty, His greatness. Be who that you are. Because as long as you hide yourself, you hide part of His greatness. Because you are one of those good stones that He have in His crown. And as long as you hide yourself, you're not shining. You're not shining, His crown is not shining. His crown is not shining, the world cannot see His greatness. And you are a good stone. You're a pure marble stone. You have such an enormous light inside of you that you're not aware of. And only when you're going to start working and expressing yourself and saying and talking and arguing and fighting, you're going to understand your mistakes and you're going to understand your weaknesses, and you're going to find out your qualities, and your talents, and your abilities. But before you're going to try, you're never going to see it. Ta'amu ukito Hashem. Only after you taste, you can see. I can describe for you the taste of a fruit that you never taste before. You will never going to understand the flavor and the taste of that fruit. Even if my descriptions will be so precise that after you're going to bite, you're going to taste it, you're going to say, wow, he was so right. Only now you can say if I was right or wrong. Before you tried, you cannot taste. Before you taste, you cannot know. You must believe in yourself that you have a destiny, that you have a goal, that you have a mission, that you, only you know what you can accomplish. There is a couple in the third floor that only you can help. There is a person over there that he is all weary and confused and you are the only one that can relate to him and talk to him. And everyone thinks he's a weirdo and that he's a crazy person. But you know more. You know that there is something special in him. And you can go and you should go. And when you will go, you will save his life. You will give him something because people are afraid. And you're not afraid. You have something else, a different spirit inside of you. And you must reveal that spirit and to be who that you are. Got it? Got okay. yeah, it. Thank you, Chazak Thank you very much. Thank you. This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.